Yes, all right. I'll put ice on it. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> you noticed the eye, huh? Yes, I kind of thought you would. It doesn't look so bad, really, does it? <laughs> Everybody thinks it looks really terrible. Doesn't it? Well, I tell you how I got this eye. You have to keep it a secret, though. It's just between us, don't forget. It started happening to me last night around midnight. Sit back, I'm going to tell you the story. Hmm. It was a peaceful night in the city. Temperature comfortable, humidity pleasant. At Science Patrol headquarters, everyone was sound asleep. Everyone except one miserable man, me. Sheep 9039. Come on now, why don't you jump over it? Jump, I said. Why are you waiting? Why don't you go ahead? Sheep, go ahead. Why don't you jump over that little bitch? Sheep 9,049, sheep 9,050. Wake up, let's go! Oh, 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 You're taking too long. Hurry! What's happened, Captain? Something strange has occurred. Our radar says an unidentified flying object has been seen flying over the city. Then it disappeared off the screen. Well, it's possible, sir, that it was a ship from somewhere in outer space. Or a meteorite of some kind. Mm-hmm. More importantly, how can we investigate further? A patrol is out already. Hayata's been sent to the area where the object was seen. Captain, this is Hayata. The object was last seen in latitudes 33 degrees and 19 minutes north, longitude 139 degrees and 6 minutes east. The computer will give us other details in a few minutes. It was last seen there? That indicates the object landed near here. Hmm. Hmm. A report came in just now, Captain. It says that no country in the world has launched any rockets into space tonight. This is Hayata again. The computer has now pinpointed the exact spot. The object, whatever it is, seems to have landed at the Scientific Technical Center. Arashi. Coming, Captain. Arashi. Sir? I want you to go to the Scientific Technical Center. I was hoping you'd send me, sir. Arashi. But not in your slippers. You can go. Right. Didn't you know you don't wear your slippers on duty? <laughs> it was already early morning as Arashi drove toward the scientific technical center. That's it. Keep your hands on the wheel. Huh? Hello, Arashi. 
Moschino, what are you doing here? I've been ordered to go to the scientific technical center, but the captain didn't mention taking you along. I know, but I mentioned it to myself, so here I am, Arash. So I see. I'll stay out of your way, but you don't know what you'll run into at the scientific center. And in case you need it, I'll lend you a hand. <laughs> You'd better stay here. I've got to conduct an investigation. And I could run into danger in there. You remain right here. I'm going in there alone. But I want to go too. Mm, you can't. But I've got a special job you can do. Keep in touch with headquarters for me, okay? Okay, Arashi. Good luck. Hoshino, contact science headquarters and say that something strange has happened. I'll need help in here. inside the main building, but I haven't received any further communication from him. But my sister keeps calling me on the radio. Hoshino! Hoshino! Any further reports from Arashi? Come in, Hoshino! She's calling me every second. She wants a minute-to-minute -minute account. What does she think we're running here after all? Does she think we're at a horse race? Just do your job. This is Hoshino. I spoke to Ayata here at the car. Right now, he's going to enter the main laboratory building and he's now about 18 yards from the building entrance. He's now about 16 yards. He's now about 13 yards. He, I what? just need every detail. This isn't a horse race, you know. meeting of the Supreme Defense Council, the creatures from outer space and a way to defend the world against them were discussed. Captain Mura, do you or any other members of the Science Patrol have any ideas? No, sir. None at all. Not at present. However... Go ahead. Out with it. Tell us what you're thinking, Captain. I... Nothing. Captain, I want to hear it. I was thinking of trying to have a talk with them. <laughs> no, this isn't a time to be funny. It's a very serious matter. 
Do you really intend to try to talk to them? It might be the only way, sir. They use dangerous weapons. Weapons such as have never been seen before here on Earth. Perhaps the only way we can stop them is to attack the ship in which they came here. Then we are all in agreement about that. If we're able to find the invader's ship, I suggest that we use our newest nuclear weapons against it. Are you certain they will have the desired effect? Suppose they do not destroy it, what do we do then? We'll be at their mercy. Our weapons won't fail. Gentlemen, why don't we try to find out what they want? If it's something very simple, we could give it to them and ask them to leave. Absolutely not! You mean surrender to them. That's what you're really saying, isn't it? It sounds like it. Yes. The conference went on for hours, and because no one else had a sensible suggestion, they decided to try Captain Moore's idea. Hmm. Come here. Come here. Kite, yushe, kirakite, eh? I don't understand you. Huh? I want to be your friend. Out of space talk. Are you sure? Well, it's space language, I think. Sort of universal. The only thing is, I haven't used it on anyone from outer space yet. Hmm? Let's go. So soon? <laughs> so there I was, me, Tito, along with Hayata, heading for the scientific technical center to try to talk to the creatures from outer space. Meanwhile, the world was put on full emergency alert against the invaders. Those rockets will blast off if you signal good. We're going to do our best. I hope so. Hmm. Uh, ah, Hayata. Are you sure this gun's been loaded? It's completely full. The first one I see won't be real, so I, I shoot at the second, and that's real. So I skip the first, and I aim at the second, and I hope I hit it. And if I don't, it's goodbye. Go ahead. Hmm? Uh, Hayata, in case the talks don't go well, you'll help me, won't you? If you don't get going, you won't get a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. I think I got laryngitis. I haven't any voice left, so how can I talk? You go ahead. I'll remain back here. Now, don't forget, I'll be counting on you. You'll be all right. Okay, now it's up to me. Hmm. I'm not afraid. Not much, anyway. I knew that was me. Kiste, luce, kirikite. That one isn't real. It's the second one that's real. <laughs> Which one is the real monster? Ki, ki, como, como, coco, coco, como, como.
Rashi. Rashi. Rashi, you're right, huh? Your space language was too hard for us to understand, so we have decided to communicate with you through this man. We have taken over and now control his body. To talk to us, you have to talk through him. Talk to him? I must be brave. You, you, I can't stop being afraid. Space creature, why did you come here to Earth? While we were on a trip in space, our home planet, Bolton, was destroyed by nuclear explosions conducted by a group of mad scientists from the Moffat Galaxy 4. We could not return to our home, so we began searching for another planet on which to settle. As we passed Earth, which we know as planet M240, our stabilizers were affected by gravity, and we were forced to land in order to repair them. I want to ask you, why did you land in this area? Your technical center has the parts we need in order to repair our ship and continue on our journey. I have another thing to ask. What made you freeze all the men who happened to get in the way? You gave the reason yourself just now. They got in our way. Where are you planning to go now? Our journey is over. This planet, your Earth, is the perfect place for which we have been looking. We will live on Earth. They can't. Just who are they, anyhow? I don't know. You can stay. You must follow our laws and all of our customs. If you agree, you will be permitted to remain here on our Earth. How many came here with you? Sixty billion, four hundred million. All of you are here on Earth? They are the size of bacteria, too tiny for Earthlings' eyes. My fellow creatures all can sleep and work, as they have for years, inside of our invisible ship. Just one among them is big enough to be seen by an Earthling. Listen, you can't stay here on Earth. There are at least four billion people here, and it's getting crowded already. Why don't you go live on Mars? None of us like Mars. We don't want to stay there. It's impossible for us to be able to spend our lives on Mars. Why is that? Tell me. No, I cannot say. Ah, you nearly did tell us. And it's just too bad you didn't say it. I said too much already. Now we will take over the Earth. Soon it'll be ours. Everybody will be slaves. Oh. Harashi! Harashi, are you all right? Oh. Stay there. Don't run away. I'll shoot it. Wait. It's going to get away. firing at him. Open fire! Any way to fight this thing? Spatium, I think. Spatium? Yes, it's on Mars. That's where we could get it. And we can't get it here on Earth, is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know he could help us. He? And who is that, sir?
Ultraman's going to help us. Shit! He's done it again. He destroyed it. The spacium wasn't needed after all. Vader ship, invisible to all but Ultraman, was destroyed. I feel much better, finally. You look oh, fine. Take it easy. <laughs> You wouldn't have had a chance if Ultraman hadn't arrived there when he did. For a minute, I thought that you were Ultraman, the way you jumped off that roof. That's very funny, Ito. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're still thinking of this black eye. I tell you how I got it then. You see, I waited till it was quiet and got back into bed and I was soundly sleeping. Fifteen thousand eight hundred two. 15,803 sheep, 15,804 sheep, 15,805 sheep, 15,806 sheep. <laughs> <laughs> 